On today's video, we're going to install a trailer light wiring harness on the vehicle side. Hey there outdoor YouTubers, it's Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors. Alright, and like I said earlier, today's video we're going to install a trailer light wiring harness on the vehicle side. Alright, now in this video we're going to install it on a 99 Suburban, but a lot of the concepts, you know, that we're going to go through, uh, a lot of some of the techniques, some of the things to look for, some of the things to maybe do, will apply to many makes and models of vehicles. Okay, now this video, this is part four of a multi-part series of videos on how to troubleshoot trailer lights, how to fix trailer lights, how to install different things, okay? Uh, if you go to my channel, Knetter's Practical Outdoors, and you go to the trailer light playlist, you'll find a lot of videos uh, on all things trailer lights, okay? Uh, how to install a new fixture, how the trailer light circuits work, how to use a multimeter, to help you troubleshoot problems, okay, all that sort of stuff. So if you're interested in some other areas of trailer lights, you know, fixing, maintaining, that sort of thing, uh, go to my channel and check out that playlist. Okay, so we went down to the auto parts store and we bought the correct four pin flat wiring harness to go on a 99 Suburban, all right? Um, if you get the correct wiring harness for your make and model vehicle they're usually pretty easy to install pretty straightforward to install okay it's just usually a matter of unplugging a plug maybe putting the plug in plugging a few things back in and you're good to go okay now having said that even though it can be pretty easy to install there is a few things you know a few little tricks a few little odds and ends that you might want to look for that we're gonna go over in this video to help this installation last as long as possible now, I know a lot of you guys are saying, hey, it's, it's way cheaper just to splice in to the wiring on the vehicle uh, as opposed to buying one of these plug-in harness connectors, all right? And, and it is, you know, way cheaper just to splice in to the wiring of your vehicle. But there's a few reasons that I really don't like to do that, okay? Now, one of them is I really don't like to gouge into, splice into, or cut into the factory wiring on my vehicle, okay? I, I just don't like to do that, you know. Uh, the factory wiring has all that good insulation on top of the wires. They're kind of protecting the wires the way they're meant to. I really don't like to uh, take tools, cut, gouge, splice into that wiring. I would just assume use the plugs that they you know, provide on the vehicle that are designed for adding in a trailer light wiring harness. I'd rather go that route. Another reason I'm not really wild about just splicing into your vehicle's wiring is, you know, if you've ever done that, you might find um, it's not that simple to figure out which wire does what, okay? Uh, the color scheme that the factory wiring is using might be either not what you're expecting or it might be non-existent entirely. All the wires could be the same color, so you are kind of got to fiddle around, try to figure out what wire does what and it kind of can lead you down the path to uh, maybe some problems, okay? So, it's much easier, a lot of times it's going to be much quicker just to buy the correct uh, plug-in trailer light wiring harness for your make and model vehicle. Now, again, this particular video, we're going to be showing uh, putting a trailer light wiring harness on a 99 Suburban, okay? But many of the concepts uh, are going to apply to many different makes and models of vehicles. So, go ahead and check it out. Alright guys, um, 
kind of came to the conclusion that this pigtail coming out of the Suburban really isn't working quite right. It's kind of intermittent, uh, works okay for a little bit, and then it doesn't. I think if you shake the wiring around, uh, it could go good, go bad, whatever. And I just bought this vehicle this past winter, so I really don't have a history with it. But anyways, I, uh, I tore all this stuff out. This pigtail was kind of spliced in in a funky way. And I really didn't care for it too much. And like I say, I don't think it was working right. And heck, we, we don't need any of this, right? Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in one of these, uh, you know, these store-bought T-splices. We're gonna break into the wiring underneath. I already took a look and, and I know where this is gonna go, but I'll show you how this work works. We're just gonna be, hey Blitz, how you doing? Anyways, we're just gonna be, uh, there's a plug underneath, I'll show you. You pull that apart, you stick this up in there, plug into each end of this, and you kind of break out of it in that T fashion. Okay guys, here's our plug right there. And all we need to do is unplug this, right? And then we're gonna go ahead and stick this T right in there, and that's gonna give us our lights. And before I plug this T in, I'm gonna put some of this uh, OxGuard, this antioxidant on the terminals. You know, it's kinda like a contact grease. We're just gonna put a little bit here and there on the ends. And should give us a nice good seal, help to keep moisture out. All right. Snap that into place there. Snap that into place there. There. And the other thing we need to do down here is we need to connect up this ground somewhere. Okay? And while I was underneath here, I did find myself a nice ground wire. Comes around up and over. And it attaches right there on that bolt. And it looks like a good wire, but I'm going to have to check it with the meter just to be sure, right? I want to make sure we get a good ground. Okay, so this is how we're going to tell if this wire is actually grounded real well. We're going to take out our ohm meter, all right? We're going to set it to ohms, all right? And then we're going to measure from one lead to that white wire. And then I'm going to take the other lead and I'm going to touch it to the chrome of the bumper. And yeah, it's reading zero or nearly zero, okay? And that tells us that that white wire is grounded really well to the frame of the vehicle. The frame of the vehicle, of course, is, touched, is touching the chrome of the bumper. And I'm measuring zero ohms or nearly zero ohms from this wire to the chrome of the bumper. So I know this wire is grounded real well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this ring and strip it back and I'm just going to wire nut these two together okay and that's going to be our connection but first thing I'm going to do I'm going to stick some of this ox guard inside the wire nut okay that's going to really help this connection to stay true not get corroded Got that on there real good. And I'm going to go ahead and tape it up good. All right. And really, the only thing left to do is to maybe tie wrap some of this stuff up and secure it and we should be good to go. 
okay. So I went ahead, I tie wrapped all this business up, got it pretty secure, and I got the pigtail coming out by the license plate. Got this coming out here. All right, outdoor YouTubers, I hope that helps you guys out. And hey, remember to hunt, fish, laugh, repeat. This is Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors. Hey, thanks for watching and God bless. Good. Did you like that?